Praise the Lord. I'm glad that there is a rock, a refuge, a place we can go. Amen? Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Good to be in church tonight. Good to be sharing the Word of God. Always accounted a high honor. I come you always to the pulpit time um, trembling <laughs> to some degree. Uh, not that I am nervous. I've preached quite a few times. Except that I want to be a messenger of God tonight. And that's a, that's a serious thing to do, is to be a messenger for God, to be an ambassador for the Lord, to represent Him well tonight. And uh, I want to do that tonight. Psalm 100 and verse 4. Psalm 100 and verse 4. And then we'll be turning just a page, it's just a page in my Bible, to Psalm 103. Psalm 100 and verse 4. And these familiar words say this, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. That's what we've been doing here tonight as we've been singing, as you have testified. That's what you've done. You've blessed the Lord. And now Psalm 103, verse 1 and 2, where the psalmist says, and I'm we just want to concur with the psalmist here tonight. Oh, bless the Lord. <laughs> bless the Lord, O oh, my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. <laughs> bless the Lord, he says again, O oh, my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Just recently, the HR department of where I work sent out an email to us uh, directors and said, make sure you remind your staff that there's a whole package, there's a whole bunch of benefits that are available to you as an employee of Wesley Manor. We don't want anybody to be left out. We want everybody to be aware that there are there are benefits such as free um, vision insurance. And man, that's a no-brainer. Uh, sign up. <laughs> free vision insurance. And, and then dental only costs you a couple dollars a month. I mean, it's just a no-brainer. And they want everybody to know there. So you have to make sure you put a, a poster up or information so that everybody can know that you have access to these benefits, insurance, health, Investment opportunities are there. Perhaps, I'm sure, your companies have some sort of package as well. I think we, take, we, we fail to take advantage of benefits, sometimes because we're not aware, but there are many times that we have forgotten. We have forgotten what's available to us. Is it not true that we are forgetful people? <laughs> Uh, Dave Cooper, I will call him on the phone, and I will say, hey, Dave, call me. And by the time he calls me, he said, what do you want, Doug? I don't remember. <laughs> I forgot. He said, well, start leaving the message on my voicemail so I can remind you what you need. <laughs> and so I've had to do that. I've had to say, hey, Dave, I need this and that and the other. And so when he calls me, he said, okay, this is what you said, and so we'll talk about it. Uh, we're forgetful people. Perhaps some here would go to the refrigerator and forget what you went for. Pastor, you're not supposed to shake your head yes. Don't, don't tell on yourself. Go into a room and you can't remember why you were there and have to start over back at the couch and say, okay, <laughs> what did I go over there for? We are very forgetful people. Someone said we could actually plan our own surprise party if we wanted to. We're so forgetful. My dad, remember, I remember him saying many times, Doug, I need a new motherboard. I need another new motherboard. My, 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 I just, my rememberer is just broken, and my forgetter is working perfectly. We, we do that. You ladies, you forget to turn the oven off. 
Us guys, we forget to take the trash out. <laughs> Worse, we forget our anniversary. Yikes, that's a bad one. Or lower the toilet seat. I mean, that is really bad. We forget that one. We're forgetful people. Is it any wonder that the scripture comes along and says, remember his marvelous works. Don't forget them. Think about them. Jesus himself, did he not say, do this in remembrance of me. For he knew what we were made out of. We are so forgetful. Ephesians comes along and says, Remember from where you came from that once you were Gentiles, you, you separated aliens from the, the, the promise, the covenants. And remember that there was a time in your life you had no hope and you were without God. And, but remember now that you've been drawn nigh. <laughs> you've been made nigh by the blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, I remember that day. I don't know about you, but I remember the day that I knelt at an altar of prayer. And for praising God here tonight, He forgave me of my sin. I remember that. I walked out of that church that night a different young boy. I was only 10 years old, but I remember it as if it happened yesterday of what I sensed that God had forgiven me. Praise His name. And so let's not forget, the psalmist encourages us tonight, before we pack away Thanksgiving, be, before we enter into the rush of Christmas season, oh, he says here, and he pleads with us tonight, remember, don't forget all of his benefits. And I think about that very first one, there in verse 3, where he says there is a benefit there is a wonderful benefit for those who come to God in faith, confessing their sin. It says there, He forgives all of our iniquities. <laughs> oh, what a benefit tonight that if you come to Jesus Christ in faith and you kneel and you pray or wherever it is and you have that faith tonight, the promise of the benefit is yours that your sins can be forgiven. That all of your iniquities can be gone in a moment of time and your heart can be free and you don't have to know the guilt and the shame and the pain of all that clings to you tonight of sin but it says there that he forgives all of our iniquities I say praise the Lord isn't that a wonderful benefit tonight to know that when we come to God he doesn't hold back for forgiveness, but he wants to give it freely to all those who ask in faith, I will forgive you of all of your iniquities. I remember experiencing this so vividly as a teenage boy. I had disobeyed my dad. I know it's hard for you to believe, but I did. And I had went to a place of entertainment that was outside of the rules of our home. And I'll never forget laying in bed that night and conviction hit my soul so drastically. I lay there, I could not sleep. I wept in my bed. You know, it's a good thing to sense the conviction of God upon your soul. If you sin against God and you sense the prick of the Holy Spirit, that's actually a very good thing. Woe unto us if we ever get to the place where we can sin before God and not know the pain and the sorrow that it should bring to your soul that you've stepped out of line with God. But that night as I lay in my bed with tears coming down in my eyes, I had, I had disobeyed my dad and I couldn't stand it anymore. I went to his bedroom and I said, Dad, I've got to talk to you. And he came to where I was by my bedroom and I began to confess to him my grievous sin. You might not think it was so bad, but I knew it was bad. I had disobeyed my dad, and I'll even never forget, even tonight, as I can see his rough construction hand put on me. And he said, son, I forgive you. I forgive you. And I'll never forget what I sensed and felt, that I was free of that guilt. I was free of that sin. I had already confessed it to God, and now I needed to confess it to my dad. Earlier in my 
days of 10 years old. As I've already said, I remember coming to faith in Christ as a 10-year-old boy and having my sins forgiven. Oh, what a benefit tonight. Have you forgotten that when you come to God in faith, He can forgive all of your sins? Hallelujah. I'll never forget hearing the confession of prisoners where I worked in Florida. Perhaps I've shared some of this, but it sticks in my mind again tonight of the worst and the heinous kind of sin that you can imagine here tonight as I listen to the confession and the testimony of men who were rapists at one time, who were murderers at one time, and other sins that I won't even talk about here tonight. But I was able to say on the authority of the Word of God, one of the benefits of having faith in God is that all of your sins can be forgiven tonight and washed clean to where you're not guilty anymore of that sin. Yes, you have to stay in this prison. Yes, you have to pay your debt to society. But in God's economy tonight, you have been forgiven. You have been set free from that sin. Hallelujah tonight. What a benefit. What a benefit tonight to be forgiven of all of our sins to the praise and glory of His grace, Ephesians says, wherein He has made us accepted (laughs) accepted in the beloved (laughs) in whom we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace hallelujah God hadn't sent an email let me tell you he's done something better He's written it in His divine Word of God that never changes (laughs) policy changes that word benefits may come and they may go but this word will never change it says that if we come in faith believing he says I can wash away all of your sin and cleanse you from all of your iniquity oh I say hallelujah tonight I just might get blessed here tonight thinking about what God gives to me as his child forgiveness for all of my sins. Oh, my sin, the songwriter said, the bliss of this glorious thought, my sin not in part, but the whole is nailed to his cross, and I don't bear it anymore. Praise the Lord tonight, people. We don't have to bear this sin because it can be well with your soul because one of the benefits is coming to God in faith is to have all of your sins forgiven. (laughs) Hallelujah. I don't ever want to forget that. I need His blood every day. I need His washing every day. I need His cleansing every day. I never want to forget. Verse 4. Oh, there's more. There's a whole lot more. (laughs) Verse 4 says, He redeems our life from destruction. He crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercies. And my heart goes out to you tonight that if you're on a path of destruction tonight, He wants you to take the very next exit off of that road and get on a highway of holiness that was preached about this morning. And on that highway, oh, there will be trouble, there will be sadness, there will be all kinds of circumstances, but you'll have joy unspeakable and full of glory. You'll have a peace that passes all understanding on that highway that God wants you to travel. You need to get off of that road of destruction and get on the pathway that God wants you to be on oh where would you be where would I be if it had not been for Jesus the songwriter asks where would I be if it hadn't been for him I was the toy of the maker of sin oh but I am so glad Christ changed all that could have been Oh, you might be here tonight, somebody watching online saying, I've gone too far. But the blood comes back and says, I, I've gone further. <laughs> you might say tonight, I've gone too deep. And the blood says, I've gone deeper. <laughs> you say, I've done too much. And the blood says tonight to you and to me and to everyone that will hear, my blood has done more. Hallelujah tonight. He wants to change your path of destruction into a highway of holiness that pleases Him. Oh, I'm so glad He arrested my heart as a young boy. 
I was on that pathway of destruction and he set my feet on a solid rock tonight, pastors. And I'm, I'm, I'm walking with Jesus. Hallelujah. He wants to change your pathway and that's what one of the benefits of coming to God is no matter what path of destruction you are on he can lead you away from that to a way of peace and joy and happiness and fulfillment and we're going to read about some or more of those tonight yet Jeff Herrick was one of my co-workers who was on a pathway of destruction God put me in this company with this young man who said he didn't want anything to do with Jesus. Well, if you're going to hang around me very long, you're going to have something to do with him because that's what I'm about. And that's what all of us ambassadors ought to be about in some way, some measure, not like me or the pastors, but in your own way that God made you. There ought to be a light shining in your life that somebody can see. Took him to lunch. I'll never forget in Jupiter, Florida, at a pizza parlor. We were having lunch. God, the Holy Spirit, spoke to me and said, now is the time to warn him of this destructive path he's on. And I painted a vivid picture for him. And I said, Jeff, if you knew your family was on a train and traveling along and you knew there was a bridge out ahead and, and they would go into this ravine and be destroyed, what would you do, Jeff? I'll never need to forget as I took another bite of my pizza as he answered me and said, oh, I'd do anything I could to stop the train. I laid my pizza down and said, I'm getting ready to do the same thing. I'm getting ready to wave the warning in front of you, Jeff. You're headed in a pathway of destruction unless you change. There's damnation ahead for you. And he listened and he laid down his pizza and he left. And I wondered, oh, no, maybe it was too hard. Maybe it was too strong said it too hard it wasn't long my cell phone rang and he said Doug I prayed the prayer I prayed the prayer and tonight he lives in Wisconsin winning his family to the Lord every once in a while he calls me he said pray for this one I'm working on this one this was a hard case Doug pray for me I'm working on them oh what am I talking about it's the benefit of God is he can take somebody who's on a destructive path and change them for eternity hallelujah tonight Praise the Lord for this. Just this week alone, I, had a, I was up in the dietary area in the kitchen. I hang out up there a lot. And I was up there cheering them up. And I, I, think, I think that's what I am there. That's what they pay me to do, to do cheerleading. And I go up there and cheer everybody up and, and do a little pep talk and all that kind of stuff. And one of the ladies looked at me. She said, I wish I had your spirit. Oh my, that lit a fire in me right there. I said, oh, here comes the sermon. I'm right now. I begin to preach Jesus to her. I said, oh, yes, you can. Right in the middle of the kitchen, I begin to raise my hand and say, oh, you can have that same spirit because it's not my spirit at all. It's the Holy Spirit whom God wants to give to you if you'll have faith in Christ. And boy, they just, oh, oh they just take back a little bit. They didn't know they was going to get a sermon right there in the middle of the kitchen. But she looked at me. She said, oh, I'll be down to pray with you. Later, I said, oh, please come on down to my office. Oh, come on down. Nothing greater than I could do than pray with somebody to receive Christ. Another this, this week stood at my door, and he leaned up. I knew he had a question for me. He looked at me. He said, why are you so happy all the time? You know, I didn't give him the answer that maybe he thought I was going to give him, that, you know what? I don't have any problems in life. I have no stresses in life. My wife is awesome. She is. I don't mean that. This is not. <laughs> oh, that didn't, I messed up there. Anyway, I didn't give him that kind of story that I did. It was all free and clear in my life. Wonderful. No, I looked at him and said, I got the same problems with you. And I reached back and got my red Bible off my desk. Thank God it works somewhere that they allow you to have Bibles. Woo! I opened it up, John 3, 16. He, he didn't know he was going to get a sermon. <laughs> but I said, oh, it's because there's eternal life flowing through me that has an overcoming power that is not my own, but is given to me freely to anyone who believes. And I got to preach Jesus Christ. So, whoo, he didn't know he was going to get a sermon that day, but he got it. Hallelujah. One of the benefits, don't forget, is that if you're on a path of destruction tonight, Oh, God can redeem you from that. Hallelujah. He can set you free from the, 
all the addictions and the chains that are destroying you tonight. It says he can redeem your life from destruction. That's why we go to the places that are filled with addictions and problems and the prisons and any other place that will hear the message because there's a glorious gospel that sets people free. Hallelujah. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Oh, I look at verse 5. <laughs> Oh my goodness, look at verse 5. We're talking about the benefits. The benefits. He satisfies our mouth with good things. Is God not good to us, people? Has He not been so, so good to us? Oh, could we not just say that together? God is so good. He is so good to us. And that's one of the benefits there is that we have a Father who loves to give good gifts to his children. I say praise the Lord for that. He's been good to me. Are you filled with the world's emptiness? Do you want true satisfaction for the deep longings of your soul? Oh, let me tell you, you can drink from a fountain that'll quench your thirst. <laughs> you can eat living bread that'll solve the hunger problem of your soul. You can have these things. It's there for us. He wants to satisfy thee with good things. Oh, I love the song we sing once in a while. Oh, I have found him, <laughs> the crystal fountain, <laughs> where all my deep needs have been supplied. So freely flowing from Calvary's mountain. And now my soul is fully satisfied. I thank God for the good things. There's a whole sermon in this verse alone. I thank God for the good food. I mean, just, just think this Thanksgiving that we just had. Uh, I mean, we had so much. I mean, oh my goodness, it was, it was leftovers. We'll be eating them for a week, I think, or better. I mean, leftovers galore. Pies, I mean, stuff left over. I, I don't think I've ever known a day where I really was, was hungry. I've seen hunger. I've seen starvation in Haiti and, and Mexico. I, I've seen those things. But I'm going to tell you tonight, God's been good to me. He's been good to you, hasn't he? <laughs> He's blessed you with so much good, so much extra. I mean, extra upon extra upon extra. Oh, we, we thank God for the good things. I thank the Lord for the, for the finances, the goodness of finances that he's, he's blessed us with. And a good job, uh, other things that we enjoy, a, a working vehicle, you know, that's something to be thankful for. Amen. Especially when you run out of gas. Oh, thank the Lord for gauges on those things. That's why they put them there for us to look at. I've, I've done it too. I think we ought to live by faith and just see how far we can go. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> That's not a good method. <laughs> Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord for good things. Thank the Lord. Now, I'm using F's here, so I had to use fitness. Thank the Lord for my fitness. And I do have a measure of health. I really do. I did join a gym one time. <sighs> About a month later, somebody said, you actually have to show up at the gym. <laughs> for it to do any good. <laughs> uh, we're blessed, aren't we? Uh, we can walk around. We have eyes to see. and We can move. And I see so many that are handicapped and, and limited in their abilities. And, I, and it makes me humble. God, thank you for, for the health that you've given me. I praise you. I thank the Lord for my friends tonight. One of the blessings, the benefits of what he's talking there, the good things, is friendship. I'm glad for my friends tonight. I've got some older friends, and, and uh, I think of Josh Petty tonight, who's a dear, dear friend of mine. I could call him right now or any time of the day, and he would pick up and, hey, buddy, what's going on? Another pastor friend of mine. It's just a blessing to have good friends to share, as Pastor said the other day, that we need to have people we can unburden our soul to. Thankful for my new friends here in this church. Jerry, you're one of them. Don't, don't deny it. You're my friend. Hallelujah. I got good friends. I got people I can lean on, other men I can call and, and cry out to and say, hey, I'm struggling here or whatever. Thank God for that. Oh, God's been good to me. He's blessed me with family. <laughs> oh, my precious wife of 32 years of November 1st. I, I just praise God. He's been so, so, so good to me. 
when I look across the landscape of marriage and say, and I see the destruction that's happened in the wasteland of marriage covenants and vows that are thrown to the side and disposed of so easily. I'm so thankful. I'm thankful for my marriage tonight. Church, we ought, to, we ought to celebrate marriage. We ought to celebrate fidelity and vow keeping and all these things. We ought to make a bigger deal of it. I, I think so. And in this day and age where everything is disposable, we can say, oh, thank God for the marriages that are here tonight that are 50 and 60 years on. And I praise God for you. You're an example to me. And I want to live up to that challenge as well. Thank God for my immediate family. My kids, all oh, my grandkids, I could just go on, but I better go on. Mom and dad and my brothers, oh, I just, I'm blessed. My church family here tonight that I believe uh, cares about my soul for my pastors here tonight. You know, I'm glad we got four. It takes four pastors for me. It does. <clears throat> Uh, but I'm glad we have our pastors here tonight who look over our soul. And I believe what Pastor Joey preached this morning of spiritual authority. I've done the exact same thing to my pastor here, Pastor Fry. Said, you see anything in my life, please come to me. Be my friend. Be a good shepherd to me and, and warn me and help me to stay, on, stay off that destructive path. Hallelujah. Oh, we can take things so for granted we can foster an attitude that if I had it coming to me, I've worked hard, I've planned well, but oh, my Bible tells me that all the good gifts tonight that I'm enjoying have come from above, from my Heavenly Father. Oh, because I can't plan well enough, I can't live good enough, and, and things, I'm not smart enough, no. But it's been the goodness of God. It's been verse 5. He satisfied me with so many good things. And I think all of us here tonight could say amen to that. God is so, He's so good. Oh, bless the Lord. Oh, my soul, the psalmist says, don't forget the benefit of serving Him I have seen the devil's servants and what he does for them. <laughs> oh, it's a terrible picture. He'll give them a little candy of pleasure and sin, and then he'll just rip it right out of them and throw them down and kick them while they're down. Oh, I've seen it thousands of times, but I'm here to promote Jesus tonight. I love serving him. He is so good to me. He loves me. He's tender with me. He helps me. He disciplines me. Oh, these are such good things. Oh, there's so many more benefits. Look at, look at verse 8. The Lord is merciful and gracious. Isn't that good right there? Isn't that a wonderful blessing? Isn't that a wonderful benefit? The Lord is merciful and gracious. He is slow to anger. Oh, and He's plenteous in mercy. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today we had some people over to, for lunch. And my wife, she made my favorite dish, scalloped potatoes. Oh, and they were especially good today, the little bit I got, because we ran out. And, and everybody else must have liked sp uh, scalloped potatoes too. And I went back for more, and it's, it's not there. Who was it that ate all that? <laughs> they ate all our, man, it was good. Oh, the wonderful thing about the Lord is that there's plenty. <laughs> Brother Fry, I don't know what, how much sin you brought to God and all the grace and the mercy he had to pour on you, but there was some left over for this one and that one. In fact, there's plenty. <laughs> there's plenty for everyone tonight. You can come and there's plenty of grace. There's plenty of mercy for your sin and my sin and the whole world. Hallelujah tonight. Oh, it's a wonderful benefit. I must hurry. Verse 9, he will not always chide. Neither will he keep his anger forever. You know, his displeasure, it fades quickly with genuine repentance. Have you not found that out with your walk with the Lord? When you've stepped out of line, and, and we've done it. I've stepped out of line with the Lord and the correction of God, and I sense the displeasure of my Heavenly Father. But just as soon as I'm back in line, oh, that just fades so quickly with genuine repentance. He's, he's not angry forever. He doesn't hold it against us. Verse 10, look at that. He hath not dealt with us after our sins. Oh, that ought, ought to make somebody shout here tonight. He hasn't dealt with us after our sins. He hasn't rewarded us according to our iniquities. Oh, hallelujah. 
Oh, when the prodigal son came home, he didn't face a father and said, I told you so. I told you what would happen. And I get out here and get in the field. And no, no. What do we have? A story of forgiveness. He didn't reward him according to. He needed to be punished seriously. He had defamed the father's name. He spent all of his money and wasted just total mess. What's he do? He puts a robe and a ring and he calls a feast. He said, my son, which was lost, is now found. <laughs> Hallelujah tonight. He hadn't rewarded you either according to your iniquities. If he had, I'd be in hell tonight. You would be in hell tonight. But oh, he's had mercy. He's had grace upon us. I say praise the Lord. It's a benefit tonight that I'm rejoicing in and taking advantage of. Hallelujah. Oh, arise, my soul, arise. Shake off thy guilty fears, for there is a bleeding sacrifice in my behalf appearing, and before the throne my surety stands. Oh, my name, it's written down on his hands. Hallelujah. We have a thief at Wesley Manor. Somebody's been stealing our tools. Dr. Dollar came to me the other day and said, I know I put that blow her away right there on that shelf and it's gone this morning like ah, yeah, yeah. just before he came in another one of my staff had come in and said I know I had tools here and, and they're gone and it was just like that it was it's another one came that I had tools and, and they're gone and, and I don't know what's going on and man it, I'm pretty smart it dawned on me we have a thief So I got cameras. Man, I ordered me a bunch of cameras. I got cameras all over the place. Not where I shouldn't have them, but I got them where I need to have them. And I'm watching. I'm watching. The executive director, he said, catch that dude. Catch him. I said, what do you want me to do when I catch him? <laughs> Throw the book at him. Call the police. Haul him out of here. Make an example. I mean, he was upset. He said, I said, you want me to talk to him? Give him a second. No second chances. Out of here. Gone. Fire him on the spot. I mean, he was upset. I'm like, whoa, that's a little rough. Okay. You know, I'm glad God didn't do that with me. <laughs> His all-seeing eye has seen me fail him time and time again. But mercy has come. <laughs> When I've confessed, when I've repented, <laughs> he hasn't given me what I deserve. He hasn't rewarded me according to my iniquities. Hallelujah here tonight. Praise the Lord that we're in church, that we're here listening to the word of God, that we're singing the songs of Zion. We could be in hell tonight, far from God, ready hope. But because of his mercy and a benefit that we don't want to forget, Oh, he hasn't dealt with me according to my sins. He hasn't rewarded me according to my iniquities, but he's had mercy. Oh, I must hurry here. For as the heavens are high above the earth, think of this, so great is his mercy towards them that fear him. Hallelujah. Verse 12, as far, think of it, as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. I can't wrap my mind around that. I know you can't either. That's a long ways from here. In verse 13, I'm closing quickly here. As a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them. What a benefit. Oh, isn't that awesome? Oh, that God has compassion on us. That he remembers, as verse 14 says, that we're, we're dust. We're dust. I, I, a good father does not turn off his child for being weak or sickly. But listen, but is so much the more indulgent as his necessity requires. There are families right here in our church that have, have special needs children. They're heroes to us here tonight, amen? They're heroes. They know, they know what it's like to, to go further and further and further in pitying their children and remembering that they're weak and that they're of dust. I'm glad I had a good wife who reminded me of this. She reminded me that, honey, Joshua's just two. 
He can't clean up his room. He can't mow the grass yet. Come on, give him a break. You know, he can't pay his own way yet. <laughs> oh, like a good father. We remember the, try to remember the maturity level. God knows and he does it the best. He does it perfect. We fail at that. We expect too much or expect too little. And somehow we try to get it in the, in the good there. But our father, he remembers that we're dust. Hallelujah. Oh, praise his name. Praise his name. Sister Campbell, would you come and play on the piano? God is so good. God is so good. I'd like to close with that chorus here in a moment. You know, the HR department, they were concerned that we wouldn't forget and wouldn't miss the good benefits. This Bible here tonight wants to remind you and wants to remind me there's wonderful benefits. It's whosoever will. You don't have to be born in a Christian home like I was, and you don't have to give good missionary parents, godly parents like I had. Thank God for all that. No matter where you come from, this good book says there's benefits for you. Whosoever will may come. There, there's water for you to drink, and you don't even have to have a price. You don't have to bring money. You can come without price and buy. There's food, there's living bread that you can taste of tonight and drink of Jesus Christ and eat of him and be fully satisfied. Praise his name. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I'm so excited about working with Brother Fry in the prison, here, local jail here, because I've seen it firsthand where people have gotten a part of the benefits that are offered to them. <laughs> Oh, they may come with their sin. They may come with their ugliness and come with their baggage and all the rest of the stuff. But, oh, we got to just stop talking about so much of that and get to the benefits. He forgives all your iniquities. <laughs> he doesn't want to remember your transgressions anymore. He wants to put them behind him, for there's more grace in the heart of God than there is sin in your past. Hallelujah. That's a wonderful message to give to people. God indeed is so, so good. Go ahead, sister. Perhaps you've come tonight thinking that you've gone too far. The message to you tonight is, oh, God wants to forgive all of your sin. Maybe you recognize that you're on a road of destruction. He can redeem you from that road. Maybe you've had the wrong idea of God himself. He's mad at you all the time. The word of God tonight says he's slow to anger. He, he, he's not interested in being angry at you. He's interested in saving your soul. Hallelujah. Isn't God good? God is so good. Oh, hallelujah. He is so good to me. And he's so good to you. I wonder if we could stand tonight and sing that chorus as we close. <laughs> I hope you go out of this place knowing that that's just, just a couple of little benefits that I've talked about. <laughs> Our benefits package at Wesley Manor is a few pages thick. That's a whole bunch right in there. Just get into it and start learning of the goodness of God. For it's the goodness of God that will lead us to repentance and maybe tonight you recognize that oh God's been so good to me and I'm just I'm just taking it all for granted oh as we sing this chorus here tonight recognize from where all these good things are coming from and may a repentant faith filled heart oh be responsive to him and you'll be the beneficiary of so much good. Would you sing it with me tonight? God is so good. Amen. God is so good. Amen. God is so good. He is so good to me. Maybe you ought to raise your hand when we sing that. Oh, God, he's so good, people. Oh, he forgives sins. <laughs> he washes them away. <laughs> he cleanses. Hallelujah. Oh, God is so good. 
Oh, he's so good. Sing it one more time, please. Amen. Oh, God. God is so good. God is so good. Amen. Yes, he is. God is so good. He's so good. So good to me. Praise his name. Praise the Lord.